Hey there, welcome back to High Infidelity, the best channel for cheating stories. Like and subscribe to channel for more spicy stories. Now, let's get into today's story video. Wife wants us to move to her hometown to be closer to her AP. May 28th. Everything seemed okay. We were chatting on FaceTime many times a day. Then one day she claims she needs some alone time to ponder about something, so I tell her I won't disturb her. After a few days went by with no word from her, I contacted her to make sure she was well, and all hell broke loose. She was weeping, telling me how upset she has been with me for years. All the unresolved difficulties she has had with me, large and little, throughout our whole relationship. Some of it was real, certain of it wasn't, but the end result was that I needed to see a therapist to work through some difficulties I was having. Which I admit, there are certain issues I need to discuss with a specialist. We have no money, alcohol, gambling or addiction problems. My main problems are with anger management, communication, and some control difficulties. It was a hard week, but once we began chatting again, everything returned to normal. I purchased a ticket for her to return home. Meanwhile, I had the impression that something was off about her. She wasn't behaving the way I was used to seeing her. She would constantly start weeping after saying, I love you so much. The first week of June, meanwhile, she complains of vaginal heat and discharge, as if she had a yeast infection. She was diagnosed and treated for a yeast infection, and I joked with her about getting an STD test as well. She did receive an STD test, which came out negative, but the vaginal problem persisted. June 23rd. She returns home and the next day arranges an online appointment with a doctor to get tested again, and when she speaks with the doctor, she walks out onto our balcony and closes the door. That was a major red flag for me since she never, ever talks on the balcony. She did it again to chat to her closest buddy, which I thought was strange. I had a feeling something was wrong. Later that night, I examined her phone to see if there was anything unusual in her texts or browsing history. Another red flag was that she wiped her complete browser history while in Arizona. Then I come across a snapshot of text conversations she deleted but was still in a deleted folder, and they were between her and another man when she was changing planes in Atlanta. She was irritated with him, since he failed to show up for the dinner they had arranged the night before she went for her homeland. I then searched through her phone records, noting how many times she texted or contacted his number. And she'd been in touch with him for five days before we had our first real chat about marital difficulties. I confronted her and discovered that he had been a long-time high school crush of hers, and she had seen him at the club one night while out with her pals. She kissed him at the bar and followed him home at night. She met him three more times in a public park after that, and she intended to visit him for dinner one more time before. Returning to me, he didn't come up on the last night, and she understood he was taking advantage of her. She said that the day following her first encounter, she felt awful and knew she had wrecked our marriage. She continued to meet him because she felt that our relationship was gone, she was lonely, and she needed a guy to give her attention and confidence. We were still communicating throughout that period she was seeing him, and she contacted him often after we spoke. There are simply a lot of emotions for me to handle with right now, she claimed she went home with him because she was frustrated with me, and when she met an old acquaintance from her past, she gave in to temptation. I was even more outraged that her closest friends allowed her go home with another guy and didn't warn her that what she was doing was wrong the whole time she was there. Three of her closest friends were aware, and none of them advised her to quit. She should have known better, and I'm simply mad at all of them. I questioned her why she came back to me instead of simply staying there. She said she wanted to come back and work on our marriage, that she wanted to do with me, and that she recognized she would never find another guy who loves her as much as I do. I honestly believe her. I think her encounter with this guy shattered her. I've been the only guy she's ever been with, so I understand a human urge to try something new when the opportunity arises, but a marriage promise needs to mean something. Now, I feel betrayed and disgusted but I'm not sure whether going to therapy to work on this and forgive her is worth it, or if what she did is unforgivable and dissolving our marriage is the best decision. It's difficult to know what to do since there are so many things society, religion, and culture teach us about marriage, yet life is hard, and being an adult is especially difficult. Is it normal to attempt to forgive what a loved one has done, or do we have certain standards that we must follow regardless of how much a person means to us? We don't have any children, Therefore, divorce is a viable possibility. At the same time, I've committed nine years in a relationship with her, and although I believe I can forgive her for making a bad choice, 
It's difficult for me to accept how shabby she treated me and believe that I deserve to retain her in my life. How am I meant to know whether she's telling the truth when she claims she despises herself and wants to be with me? I've contacted a therapist for me as well as our marital counselor. She'll need to see a therapist to work through her concerns. Story 2 My wife cheated on me and I have an odd request for her to help me cope. So to give you some context, the wife and I were having some difficulties because she suspected I had stolen money from a business partner and lied to her about it. I tried trying to explain to her that it was a mistake and that it was not true and I'd even provided her evidence that I didn't do it, but she decided to listen to other people over me and filed for divorce on 10-6. She began chatting to a man after she filed for divorce, by happenstance, not on purpose. And she never cheated on me before the divorce, I know this for a fact. Over the following several months, I fought to establish my innocence, and I sent all of my paperwork to her attorney so that they could provide her with a third-party view. During this time, she became closer to this person, and on 11-21, she lied to me about where she was going and went to have with him. On 11-27, I discovered she was messaging this person and questioned her. She told me that nothing had transpired. At the same time, her lawyer finally returned and declared, Yep, your spouse is innocent, clear as day. On 11-28, I discovered via my own investigation that she had with him, and I spent the following week working out how to approach her. We agreed to call off the divorce on December 3rd, despite the fact that I knew she cheated and she had no idea I knew. So I approached her on 12-4 and informed her that I knew something more had occurred and that if this marriage is going to succeed, she needed to tell me now. She acknowledged to having and I admitted to knowing. I also stated that I was in a bad mood and attempted to exact vengeance on her by downloading Tinder and doing the same thing, but I couldn't bring myself to go beyond a few emails with any women and presented the evidence. I never cheated or even spent the time to actually get to know any other girl. Now I'm attempting to deal with everything she did, including filing for divorce based on a rumor, publicly bad-mouthing me, selling her wedding ring, and screwing another person. She continues to beg and plead for me to take her back, and a big part of me wants to because I keep justifying her infidelity by telling myself that we were in such a bad place together and the divorce was filed before she did it. So maybe we can heal. With professional help. Or maybe not. But I love her enough to give a fair shot. She informed me a few days ago that sleeping with another lady would relieve her guilt and handed me the hall pass. I rejected because that's not who I am and I feel it would be harmful to our marriage, but dealing with her infidelity is difficult. But oddly, our life has improved, as has our communication and honesty. So an idea came to me, and I haven't questioned her about it yet, but it was as follows. If you're feeling bad enough to give me a pass, and since that's not who I am, why don't we utilize this chance to try with it with another female she chooses? And she may determine the rules. My rationale is as follows. I can't cheat on my wife. Period. Regardless of what she did or how irritated and upset I am. We've grown closer and shared more than we ever have in all facets of our life. And we've even discovered new things in bed that she loved without even realizing it. If sharing me with another woman relieves her guilt and allows us to go ahead then having and sharing the experience with my wife would be the healthiest way to go. We'd both be able to go ahead knowing that each of us had our time on the other side of the fence. Since her cheating made her realize that she has it perfect with me and will have to live with hurting the person who loved her more than anything, her words, maybe spending time on the other side of the fence with her involved and picking the partner will bring us closer by easing her guilt, my betrayal, and rebuilding our trust in one another because I'd involve her. Is any of my reasoning, notion, scenario, etc., reasonable, or am I insane and in such a strange place that I'm simply grabbing for anything to make me feel complete again? I'm at a loss on what to do. Please assist.